Thank you, Deepak. That was wonderful. Um, the last part of your talk really hit home for me based on a case that I had just a couple of weeks ago on the consult service. It seems to me that an agent like Kangalor is sorely needed. Uh, we had a patient who um, was uh, previously known to be a healthy gentleman. He was driving. He developed some chest pain, passed out, ran into a wall. Uh, when he presented to the emergency department, he had inferior ST elevations. He was stabilized from his trauma and went straight to the cath lab. Um, was critically ill in an ICU, was getting his plavix, was doing well, and then all of a sudden developed new ST elevations in his inferior uh, leads right where uh, he was stented just a few days earlier. And one of the concerns we had is that he wasn't absorbing the plavix. So how do we manage that, and is it is the only thing we have to wait for something like Kangalore? So that's a great scenario, and I, I think every busy practitioner has similar sorts of situations that come up where it seems like having an intravenous agent would be useful, either because of issues of absorption. And now there are several small mechanistic studies that show in a STEMI patient in particular, not necessarily even in cardiogenic shock, but including those in shock, there's impaired absorption of clopidogrel, prasugrel, and ticagrel, in as much as they don't have their full antiplatelet effect until several hours later. So we always thought of that as a limitation of clopidogrel, but it actually exists for prasugrel and ticagrel. So I think having something that gets in quickly and is potent could be useful, uh, either because the patient can't take PO or they're not absorbing well, or also just in situations where there's uncertainty and you don't know what's coming next. You know, is this patient going to need an exploratory laparotomy? I mean, who, who knows what sort of trauma might have occurred there? You know, is there a pericardial contusion? Is that why there's ST, or myocardial contusion? Is that why there's ST elevation? Or is it inferior ischemia? Is there a dissection involving the RC? I mean, there's so many things initially that are uncertain, especially in patients that are more critically ill. Having an intravenous agent could be useful. But even on the flip side, in the lowest risk patients there, there really is no evidence that pretreatment with oral agents helps, but it certainly can delay surgery, especially in the U.S. where cabbage is still popular. So I think an intravenous agent could help in a variety of situations. It's not too uncommon that we have critically ill patients, even coming through the CCU, who get stented and they remain in shock and their absorption is a question. In our patient, it was challenging because they had so much, uh, so many traumatic injuries, but is there a role for a glycoprotein 2B3A antagonist if you're worried that patients uh, aren't absorbing Plavix or? So if you thought a patient wasn't absorbing or was just not pretreated with, say, clopidogrel or other uh, ADP receptor antagonists, glycoprotein 2B3 inhibitors still have a role for a variety of reasons. Their use in the U.S. has plummeted, and their use outside the U.S. never really took off other than in perhaps Europe and ST signal elevation MI. Part of that was probably cost issues that really um, hampered it. And then once pretreatment took off, with an absence of really good data supporting it, but once it took off, 2B3 inhibitor use really dropped. The problem with the 2B3 inhibitors, though, is if you do think that there's going to be an issue of needing surgery or, or potential high bleeding risk, they still linger in the system for a while. Abciximab's biological effect can linger for a few days. The short-acting 2B3 inhibitors, eptifibotide, tyrofiban, still linger in the system for a few hours. Excellent. Well, I think we're going to move on. Deepak, thank you. That was wonderful.